This is Tom from Deadly Grounds Coffee, and you're watching The Bitten Apple. Is this thing on? This is Katna here from Bitten Apple TV. I am here at New Jersey Horror Con. Now, guess what? I am sitting here with Ken Page. Now, for those who are, um, you guys are the millennials, the younger millennials, you guys are like, okay, Oogie Boogie, Nightmare Before Christmas. I knew him from All Dogs Go to Heaven. Um, I love that movie. Like, I was, I was probably one of my most emotional films, like as a kid. <laughs> it, did, it really did. Um, what I wanted to know um, is what became what. I guess motivated you for your passion to do voice acting and um, what did you also enjoy about playing Oogie Boogie and then you also, I mean, they're Oogie Boogie and then the Crocodile, they're almost kind of like the same kind of mischievousness to them, um, but what drew you in uh, to do this career as well as doing those characters? Well basically for me it came out of being a theater actor, you know, I've done a lot of Broadway work and <laughs> excuse me and things. Cats by the way, which isn't, that's not running anymore, right? Because I always wanted to see it. The DVD is there. I'm in the DVD forever. You can always get it. <laughs> um, so I came from theater and of course voice work and so forth is part of that and characterization and so forth. So it was kind of a natural extension. Uh, as far as Oogie and uh, uh, King Gator, uh, there's similarities. I mean, uh, I think that the fact that they're big and green is probably, <laughs> is probably their biggest similarity. Um, but you know, you start with what the character's intentions are in the context of what you're doing, and you go build out from there. So that was the, the process of the work. And uh, of course, in uh, All Dogs Go to Heaven, he's an opera-loving alligator who lives in the sewer. Or crocodile, some people like to say. But he lives in the sewer, so the whole thing of being down there and loving opera was sort of fun, and getting to do the duet with Burt Reynolds. We never met, but we actually did record the song. And uh, uh, with Nightmare, I mean, it was a big thing about how, how to create the character and what the elements were. And I always said, for me, it was a combination of the, the, uh, the um, cowardly line from The Wizard of Oz and the voice of the demon in The Exorcist. And a little sauce thrown on top, a little Cab Calloway, you know. So that's how I came up with it. Okay, obviously you know that you've done a phenomenal job with uh, both the characters because you left such an impression on me. Um, as I got became more interested like in entertainment, um, there are certain characters that I'm like, that one, this one, and that's what I would love to do like as my as I pursue my career. Um, what aspect of yourself did you put in Oogie Boogie as well as King Gator? <laughs> well, I love opera, so there's that for King Gator. And I have a line I threw in that's in the recording. I said, this is for you, Mama. And I hit this big high note. And that was the, actually, I put that in. For my mother. Uh, and for uh, uh, Oogie, what would I say? I think my sense of um, mischief, you know, of having, com having humor and mischief at the same time, if that makes sense, in myself because I love to play practical jokes or make people laugh and stuff like that, just, you know, off the cuff. What's your favorite practical joke that you've ever played <laughs> on someone? I, I shouldn't have said practical joke because it's really more just um, making people laugh, you know, it, I do impersonations and all sort of things like that, you know. So mostly that, more than practical jokes, because I'm not a practical joke person. I don't like them played on me, <laughs> you know, I don't like to play them on people, so I really mis misspoke there, but just to play with people, you know. Um, you are absolutely uh, phenomenal, and you bring the characters to life. They leave such an impression, like they're real. Like that's it. There's no questions asked. They are real. You're like, no, nah, Oogie's in my closet. Don't worry. I know where King is. Everything's all right. Um, but what was your impression when you first read the full scripts of All Dogs Go to Heaven? I never did. Really? No, no. You never. You know, with things like the voice recording. Even you don't work with anybody. I recorded all the stuff like for Nightmare Before Christmas alone. There was no one else there. I mean, in terms of another actor to play on it. Yeah, you record all the things wild, as it's called. Same thing with uh, um, All Dogs Go to Heaven. So I, I never saw the whole script. I only knew what I was doing. So in regards to like acting and you're creating these characters you need to play off of, um, how drastic is that difference for you when you're on the stage and then you compare it to just being in a, in a room by yourself and you got your equipment on and you're like, okay, I have to react. So how, how do you determine how big you really should go? Because they say you go big or you go home. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's night and day. I mean, when you're on stage and you're actually with someone else, it's your duty to listen as much as speak. 
as an acting uh, balance, you know, so you're always listening to the other actor and what you do in listening to them is also acting instead of just not when you're talking, you know. Uh, in voice work, it's all about your imagination because you're doing it all by yourself. So if you knew the line before you and you have to record a line, you have to say the other line in your head to respond to it. There's nobody there. Yeah. That That's kind of cool, though, and I never thought about it that way. Cause it, you know what? I think all children do that by themselves all the time. It's just the trick of hanging on. Well, it's the trick of hanging on to it as you get older because kids play by themselves all the time and they're doing voices and they're all kinds of people all at the same time. Hanging on to your childhood thing is the thing, right? You must be so fun to be around. And of course, I do have to ask you questions about cats. Um, I grew up always when I saw the commercials and I'd be like, Mom, we have to go. Yes. Like, <laughs> I, I want to see this. And unfortunately, I never got the chance to go to Broadway to see it. And I was like almost in tears. I'm like, okay, last year. And I was like, why? <laughs> it, was like, it was finally the one year that I could have gotten the chance to go. And then I couldn't go because all the tickets were bought out because that, that was the end. But what's that like being in cast? I mean, that is probably one of the most legendary like Broadway shows that's always in everyone's mind. What was that like? It was amazing because when we started it way back in the dark ages, back in 1982. Before YouTube, guys. Yes, be <laughs> well before YouTube. Uh, but it had already been a big hit in London, so we knew of it and when it was brought to the United States. And uh, it was pretty much a singular kind of experience because you don't get things that are that big as far as media attention and things like that very often. So it came with all of that. It didn't just happen from it being done here. People were very much focused on it. I remember when they were casting Grisabella at one point, they said Cher was going to do it and Liza Minnelli was going to do it. So it had a lot of media attention. So that part of it uh, was phenomenal. You know? Did you find that part overwhelming, the fact that it came with the full package of all this media and presence and everyone already knowing about it, compared to it building up? No, no, actually because we were... We knew about it, of course, you know, but we were kept very much in a work mode as far as the rehearsals and everything. You know, the British work in a different way than the Americans, and Trevor Nunn was our director, and it was very much about, it was almost like we'd gone away to a master class in, in acting, because we were just sequestered away. We didn't deal with any of the press or any of that sort of thing, we just worked on the show. Uh, like opening night, for instance, I always love to say people talk about how spectacular it was. My mother and grandmother came for it. And, you know, all kinds of stars were there. All kinds of people. Well, we didn't know anything about it. We were backstage getting ready for the show itself. We weren't out there on the red carpet experiencing all the hoopla, you know. So that's how it was pretty much in general. We were involved in the work more than anything. I think that's probably the best way because then you're not, I guess, too distracted by anything else. You're just focused on your craft and your art. Um, I'm just so excited to sit here with you. I'm, uh, I, I love what you've done. I've only had seen Cats, Mom. Uh, <laughs> on DVD. We filmed it in London back in, I think, when, in 1997 with Elaine Page as Grizabella, the original Grizabella from London. So it's there to be seen now and forever. <clears throat> Mom, birthday. <clears throat> so, <laughs> um, thank you so much. Um, you are very inspiring and you've left such a wonderful impression on my childhood that I'm just so excited just to sit here with you. It was my pleasure. Thank you.